facial paralysis happens for a variety of reasons. And then the healthy movement, which I accept as 100% on or either on right side of the face or the left side of the face, can go down to zero, which we call facial paralysis. There's absolutely no movement. Or sometimes there's weakness. So the paralytic side can be moving less compared to the healthy contralateral side. So this can happen for a variety of reasons. And usually the body heals itself. And with the help from the medical treatment, the facial paralysis just heals and the nerves repair itself. So the movement comes back and it can come back to 100%. But sometimes this healing doesn't go well and there is facial paralysis for a delayed amount of time and there's no movement. And we group facial paralysis into two, where there's no movement, which we call facet facial paralysis. And the second group is where there's partial movement. And this is usually associated with unwanted movement, which we call synchinesis. This happens about 20% of the time. And we call it aberrant regeneration. So we can think of the facial nerve like tree trunks coming from the ground and then they branch. And every one of us facial nerve branches in their own unique way. And unlike the, these trees, facial nerve branches also have communications between themselves, which the trees don't. So this makes it a unique grid, a unique signalization system uh, where the impulse comes and it either goes to the brow or to the eye or to the smiling muscles or to the lips or neck. And there's a very, very clever system. But when there's facial paralysis and it heals in the wrong way, then we can have unwanted muscle contractions on our face. And this happens about 20% of the patients. So how do you know you have synchinesis? There must be a story of facial paralysis. And this happens either slowly or fast. So the, your movement or either on right side or left side goes from 100% to 0%. Then the body repairs itself, but about after eight months, nine months, 12 months, then the movement comes back, but along with the good movement that you desire, there's unwanted movement, such as contraction in the brow or unwanted closure of the eye. Or when you smile, the amount of teeth we see is less because contralateral muscles are pulling and pushing. So, and this happens uh, to be like a tug of war. And there can be uh, tightness around the neck region or unmounted uh, movements of the mouth corner. Or sometimes we see these dimples in the skin, which shows underlying muscle, which is contracting on its own. And this can be very hard for the patients. This brings loom to them and decreases their quality of life because they cannot give a picture or when they are smiling, they want to cover their mouth and they cannot express themselves fully. If you are a patient who had facial paralysis and then the movement can, came back, but, but along with good movement, there's unwanted movement on your face in the contractions. So I would get this situation to be stable around 18 months. We cannot say how worse it's gonna be before 18 months has passed. And after 18 months, the good news is that it's not going to get even worse and potentially it can get much better if you get the right treatment. There are many treatment options for treating synchronous situation. The first being physical therapy, another being usage of botulinum toxin, which is Botox or Dysport, for reducing the activity of these synchronetic muscles. But the therapy I would like to focus more, which is, I believe, the golden treatment standard in a synchronizing situation uh, currently is a selective neurolysis surgery. Other names uh, used for the same surgery is selective denervation or selective neurectomy surgery. So what we do in selective neurolysis surgery is basically we do the surgery under general anesthesia and we make a cut here and that cut is the same with a facelift surgery. So it's very inconspicuous, it's very hidden and it heals very well. And this surgery is done under general anesthesia. 
it takes about three to five hours depending on the patient and the situation. And what we basically do is just think of this facial nerve as a tree and we follow each and every branch very delicately and principles of reconstruction and electrostimulation is used in the surgery. So when you are under sleep, we give very delicate electrical stimulation to each and every branch on your facial nerve and we see the movement. So this gives us an idea about your unique facial nerve mapping and we understand which nerves are very valuable and which we have to preserve and the ones that are synkinetic that are making a deformity while you're trying to smile or while you are trying to express yourself. So what we do is we preserve maximally the healthy ones and the unwanted movement making ones, we transect them and we use very little titanium clips to make sure it doesn't repeat. So the basic idea is that what we get from this surgery is permanent and you benefit from it the rest of your life. So during this surgery, it's important to stress the fact that this surgery is very, very, very delicate. And after surgery, there's only some swelling on your face and there's no cut on the face and you can be discharged from the hospital the next day. And I will be seeing you on day three and day seven to make sure everything is on track. And you just have skin uh, color tapes on your face. There's no like big dressing or anything. And the patient's benefit on the surgery depends on four factors. First, everyone has their unique facial nerve branching and their unique grip. And the second is that psychosis affects everyone in a different way. And facial weakness, the amount of facial, facial weakness is also another factor that affects the outcome. And the third one is, of course, the surgery. During that day, we should not rush anything. Every should be, should be on perfect and we should make the best decisions. And the best way of the surgery is that everyone has their unique facial nerve anatomy and everyone has their unique facial psychinesis deformity. So this puts me in a position that each time I perform this surgery, I have to do my best with the anatomical experience I have and with the technology I use and the decisions on that day should be customized to the specific needs of the patient. And also other cosmetic surgeries can be added while we are doing the surgery, such as a facelift or a brow lift. We can combine these if the patient wants or requires these. And after surgery, the benefit you get just presents itself over a course of one year. Let's say, I like asking the questions in my practice, how would you rate your healing on your face out of 100? Let's say the healthy side is 100%. So the patient, for instance, tells me, okay, I think it's like 50%. So I tell them, my first priority after surgery is to make sure the 50% doesn't go down to 49. It's unacceptable in my practice. So the first priority is the safety of this operation. For a temporary period of time, after surgery, you may have temporary weakness on your face, which is normal. Like you had in the beginning, you remember, you had some cold on your face and then it caused a facial paralysis. So this nerve is very, very, very vulnerable. So the most frequent question I get in my practice is, doctor, is it the possibility that my face will be burst? I'm glad to tell you it never happened to me over so many years and I have so much experience now after carrying out this surgery for a period of four years now. So there are certain principles that I live by and there are certain technologies and things I prioritize for a safe surgery. The first one is very good anatomical knowledge and the second one is experience. And I can tell you even at a very young age this is very rapidly increasing, especially for the surgery. The third one is using medical visualization stuff. So this is reconstructive microsurgery. So we get the best uh, loops 
and the best equipment so we see the, the, the anatomy of the nerves the best way possible. And also we utilize the technology that will ensure we keep doing the best decisions during surgery. Another thing is that I tell this to my patients on an everyday basis. I tell them, you don't need a hero. You need a surgeon who manages this risks to benefit ratio in a very professional way. So I know where to stop. And because your face and my career is in the same boat when we decide on the surgical process together. And I will not be humble about this, but my patient satisfaction is in a good level and I make sure it keeps as it is. So how do we decide on the success rate? So, you know, preoperatively, we document visually your face, your smile with 2D and 3D technology. And after surgery, at three months and first year, we compare this. So the utmost aim of the surgery is to put these photos or visual visuals side by side and say, make the patient say, I'm glad I underwent this surgery. This is the utmost priority. So let's talk with numbers. Let's say a patient started from a 50% healing and then after surgery, the patient came up to 80% healing. So there's a 30% increase on the facial expressions and happiness of the facials. So this is very satisfying. But sometimes the patient wants more and now it's the, it's the surgeon's job to evaluate if that can be delivered or not. So there's some amount of revision rate in the surgery. Sometimes the patient wants to go from 80% and to, to 90. And I evaluate that, that on a patient-based customized approach. And I can say in my surgery, about eight to 10% revision rate is a part of this surgery. So for patients who just recently had facial paralysis and are now starting to get synchinesis or who, for patients who had synchinesis for many, many years, there are very nice improvements that can be done. And the best way to understand this is consultations, either face-to-face -face consultations or for abroad patients, online consultations can be very useful to understand well, how is the weakness of the patient, facial weakness of the patient, the synchronized situation, the expectations of the patients and the right treatment. And I encourage all patients who have synchronesis to get in touch with a healthcare professional because very good improvements can be achieved with this surgery. And in, along with a selective neurologist surgery, other cosmetic things or addressing the facial asymmetry can also be incorporated with single treatment. So after a surgery like this one, it's very expected to get a weakness for a period of time. But if it's temporary, I don't care. What I prioritize is the end result. So let's say you started with 50% and the surgery and the healing process gives us a 30% more. So you will benefit uh, about that 30% and your face healing will be 80% for the rest of your life. But this will not happen the first week after surgery. We have to be patient and we have to let the facial nerve reorganize itself and to heal from the surgery. But this is very powerful surgery and it's my favorite surgery and it has great potential to bring great positive change to uh, patients' lives. And this, this surgery is my favorite.